Hello, welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy. Today I want to share with you just a quick trick that I came up with using for using six by six inch paper pads. And sometimes these can be hard to figure out what to do because you feel like you're really wasting stuff if you don't use the whole thing. This pocket trick that I'm going to show you uses the whole thing except for this part where you have to square up and you can always do something with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is square them up because this actually measures like six and I think it's six and a half but I'm not sure. No, it's not even quite six and a half. So we'll square it up and that will take care of taking that hole off the end. We'll do that to both pieces. And the thing about using uh, the six by six square paper pads, actually as long as it's square, it doesn't even have to be six by six, is that you know that everything's gonna coordinate. I mean, this goes with this, this goes with this, that goes with those. So you don't really have to do all the fussing and figuring on how you want your papers to look. I think I want just a little bit more contrast, or a little less. I don't know if it's a little less or a little more. I want different. How about that? I want different contrast. So I'm going to go with this polka dot with the street signs. And the first thing that we're going to do is choose which one we want to be the pockets and which one we want to be the background. The background will not have as much showing, but it will have some showing. So once you figure that out, I'm gonna make that be my background, I think. Oh. Now I'm gonna stick with this. This is gonna be my background. And then this blue polka dot, I am going to use to make my pockets. Now these pockets will be going in different directions. So if you have one with words or something that needs to be upright, then you might want to take that into consideration when you are cutting. Now, the first cut we're going to make is going to be at three inches. Simple. The next cut, I am just, I'm just almost off screen. You can measure it with a ruler if you do not have a cutting board like this. I come in and I put this corner on the one inch line on this side of the cutting, and then this corner on the one inch line on that side of the cutting. That means that it's going to be about one and a quarter inches here. Um, the exact measurement doesn't matter as long as it is the same distance on both ends. When you cut it, they should be exactly the same. And make sure that you don't turn this one and go this way because then it's not going to match up right for you. So you want to make sure that you get your corners going in the right direction. Again, that corner is on the one and this corner is on the one on this side. And then I just, whoops, and then I just knock it out of alignment because that's what I do. And cut that. And now you should have four pieces of the six by six paper that are exactly the same shape. Just like that. Now we're gonna set this to the side. And this is where we need to place our pockets in the design. This will take a little, fina little finagling because you will want to match up this pointy corner to the right angle on the next one. You see that? And you're gonna put glue, put glue on this one because then you don't have to guess where the glue is going to be on the back of it. Put glue on that edge. And then line that pointy edge up to the corner and come down. Get that aligned. And since you're 
line your corners are straight that will help since your cuts are straight angles that will help this to become or remain a right angle okay whoops there goes my glue oh scrap paper I feel like I waste more glue doing that and then you're going to repeat that on this next one I should have refilled my bottle before I started recording, but I'm going to pick up my kiddos from school and I don't have long <laughs> to record. And then we are busy, busy, busy tonight. So I wanted to get this in. It's already been a long, busy morning. And then tonight we're going to go see my youngest daughter dance. She is a professional dancer and they have not been able to dance since well, let's see, they had a show coming up just before COVID shut everything down here in Indianapolis. And that was very hard. Okay, this one is a little trickier because you are going to need to slide this piece over the top of this one, but under the pointy one. Okay, can you see what I'm doing here? Slide it down, match up your points. I got a little too much glue on that one, but that'll be okay. Because this is the Fabri-Tac, you can kind of ball it up after it dries just by rubbing it. And I have a glue eraser that is um, right here and it works really well. It looks strange but it works really well. Um, I'm not sure where I got that. Now, this part's a little bit tricky too because you have to hold this one up while you're gluing that one. So let's just get that glued together. And then I will show you some variations. Well, I won't show you, but I'll explain some variations. Maybe I'll show you if I have time. And we'll just let that glue dry. And what you have here is going to be four pockets. So let's go ahead and glue it onto our page. You can off center it. I think I kind of like the off center. You could do glue this directly to your journal page. What you want not to do is glue these parts in here because you need some room there for your tag or your card or whatever it is that you're tucking in to the pocket to be able to go. So we're just going to put glue around the four edges. That's it. Nothing in the middle. And then you'll just place this where you want it to go. See that just rubs off. Get that one too. I didn't even have to get my glue eraser out. Lots of times it comes off without too much issue. All right. So that'll be dry very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and start another one real quick because I want to... I want to show you um, a variation. Let's see, but I kind of want something that I'll be able to use. Let's see. I have used several pages out of this book, so I have kind of limited myself on what I have left that I think would go together well. Let's see. Um, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to use this for the background and I'm going to use the uh, arrows. It'll be green on green and that'll be okay. So let's go ahead and square this to the six inches once again. Let's 
same cutting as before. I'm gonna make this be my background. Again, we're gonna cut this at three inches or half of whatever the paper pad you're doing is. You could do four by fours. You could do all kinds of things. Just make sure, like I said, that your angles here are the same. That is so important to make sure that this works. And that did not cut all the way through. Goodness gracious, it's been a day. I could just pull another one, but I'm not going to since this is just to show you how to do it. If I need to fix it, I can fix it. All right, there's those two. I think I maybe do to change my blade in my cutter. It has been a while since I've had to do that. And it may be that I didn't hold it down. Nope, I think it's the blade. <laughs> Okay, doke. So we'll just cut this with the scissors. Which is fine because you may need to cut cut it just with scissors anyway. You may not always have a cutting board with you. Now, you'll go through the same process as you did last time, but for this particular one, I am going to space it out a little bit. I am going to pull this back to where it measures about five inches. And that means that I need to glue that right there. And so to do this, I'm going to take my thumbnail and just kind of pinch a little bit. So I've got a tiny little mark there. I mean, you can't even see it. I can barely see it. But that shows me where to stop with my glue. And I'm going to glue the same way I did last time. And when you do it this way, you end up with more of a space in the center to see your background. On this one, you see almost none of the background. So this one... We'll go here, and I want it to be five inches. So I'm going to put glue to that point. If I can see what I'm doing. There we go. And the reason I do this this way is so that I don't have a bunch of extra glue that's going to be sticking to other parts and pieces that I don't want it to be sticking to, that I don't want to be stuck together. And again, on this one, you're going to do that the same way. You're going to put your glue on here, and then you have to slide it behind this one, and then lift up your flap over here to glue I'm trying to get my marking here to glue underneath of here so if you wanted to be daring you could put your glue on this flap oh my goodness not this flap on this uh, edge your mark and you can put your glue on this edge at the same time and then just move this piece into place all at once so this will slide under here and this will go over here and again I've got a little bit too much glue down there on that corner but remember it cleans off very well and then you can put this on here. You see a little bit more of the background in the middle. You could also take 
another piece of cardstock, you could cut that to five and a half inches, which I'll just show you real quick on this one. I kind of like borders and frames. Um, I never was a scrapbook scrap booker really, but I did make some scrapbooks for gifts. And I just always liked the idea of framing and framing. And so for this, what I would do is just to give a little bit of extra, um, extra what? Extra what? What's the word I want? Extra eye appeal, I guess. Make it stand out a little more. To do that, and then I would just glue on this one around these sides and make another pocket behind it. Now, while actually I do like that, and I have a travel journal I'm going to be making, so let's go ahead and glue this one down. Ooh, that looks pretty too on that blue, but that's not what I'm using. So again, we'll glue all the way around the edges because this doesn't work so well to make a pocket in itself on the back side because it catches on things. If you want to make this a, a big pocket behind the four small pockets, then you're going to have to back it with something. I'm going to center this on here. And I like that the arrows are going all different directions. This was a directional paper, but it lent itself to being multi multiple directions because of the arrows. And then we could take this pocket. Ooh, I'm glad I did this. That works really well for that thing. Um, I have a poll going on over on my Ephemera Files by Tommy Facebook page. I'm ready to start another journal and I have actually 17 of them where I have lots of stuff in these little organizers that are ready to go and make a journal. I just don't, I decided that I would let you all help me decide which one I was going to make next. So if you want to go over to Ephemera Files by Tommy, if you need to know how to spell it, look at the title of this video. Um, and vote on which one you like the best. So there are two variations on that same pocket, and I want to show you how it works. I have, oh, I only have three tags over here, so we'll have to pretend that there's a fourth unless I can find one over here. No, nope, we'll just pretend, or I could just use one. But um, you just tuck your tags in, they over lap in each direction. There we go. I wish I had another tag. There's something over here that'll work. I think that's too wide. This might work. At least just to show you. If you pretend that's a tag, it makes kind of a pinwheel effect, okay? And this one over here, even though the pockets are smaller, it still works. You may have to, you may have to get smaller tags. And I do have smaller tags over here this time. There's a tag. I didn't pull these because they match the project. I just am grabbing them out of my basket of tags. Oops, wrong way. I guess you could put it that way. It would go down there. You could put a long tag that way. Let's see how far it goes. I didn't think about that. So you could put long tags that way or your regular tags this way. And that's just a, a quick trick for making pockets from these six inch square paper pads without wasting any paper. And that's my favorite kind of project is where I don't waste anything. 
I just went through for the past couple of days all of my small paper scraps and punched out the largest shapes out of each scrap of paper that I could get and put them in this basket so that I could just get rid of what I had to without wasting paper. All right, so there we go. There are two variations on the same pocket. You end up with four pockets. They overlap in a pinwheel and wheel, pin wheel, and I think that they look like so much fun. I thank you for joining me today. Pop on over to my Facebook group and give me uh, an answer as to which of the journals that are listed that you would like to see me um, go through making. Which one would you like to see next? There are a variety of kinds of journals because I am very eclectic. All right. Thank you for joining me today. And as always, remember, be kind. Bye.